In today's video, we're gonna be talking about OBS Studio Mode and how to use it. Roll that intro. What's going on guys, Chad here from How To Tech, the channel dedicated to helping you take your tech to the next level. And today we're gonna to be talking about OBS Studio Mode. What is it and how do we utilize it for our live streams or video recordings? So yeah, let's go ahead and jump over to the computer and take a look at it. All right, so now that we're over on the computer, we're gonna go ahead and set up OBS Studio Mode. It's probably a button you've seen over here and you may have clicked it before and had no idea what it did. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and click that and this is going to open up Studio Mode. So one thing to keep in mind whenever you're using OBS Studio Mode is you're gonna need multiple scenes for this to really be useful. Now you still can do some stuff with only one scene if you wanted to and it's gonna be beneficial for people who live stream or recording or need to just change stuff on the fly inside of OBS without people seeing them screw around with stuff that's in a scene. So before we really get into that, we're just going to talk about what your scenes are. If you don't know already, that's going to be over here on the left. We can see that I have a monitor and a webcam. I'm going to turn studio mode off and show you what happens essentially. So if I was recording or live streaming, anything that's on this screen here is what they're going to see. So if I drag the how to tech logo around, you're going to see me dragging it around on stream or while I'm recording. And that's not really that optimal for most people. And if I transition to my camera and you're just seeing my camera, this is the same thing. You're just going to see this um, on the live stream or the recording. And same thing if we went back to my monitor and we can see we've got three scenes here and we're going to mess with them a little bit and see what studio mode it is. So I'm actually going to go to the monitor and I'm going to leave it here and then we're going to click studio mode. And now that we're in studio mode, we have a preview on the left hand side and then a program monitor on the right hand side. The preview is going to be essentially your sandbox and your playground to adjust things before it goes to the program side or the live stream. This on the right hand side is what people are going to see. On the left hand side, this is just your view. You can work on stuff in here, tweak it, make it look nice, and then whenever you transition over to it, um, people will be able to see that. So. Getting started first, we're going to go to the monitor and webcam so we can see that we have this stuff in there now. The program is still showing that we are on the monitor screen so we can see that it's going to keep picking this up. So this is great, like I said before, if you're playing video games or something or streaming, you're doing something and you need to update stuff, this is where this comes in handy. So let's say I needed to add something to this uh, monitor and webcam scene. I can go down to images. I can grab an image and we'll just leave that image too. And I can browse and let's go ahead and add this right here, the how to fix little icon that we've used in some past thumbnails. I can now move this around and say that's where I like it. I'll leave it. I could lock these if I wanted to, but we're not going to. Um, and then we'll click transition and our transition plays and now we can see we have moved over to this scene that has the how to fix button and we didn't have to edit that where people are seeing us drag stuff in and move it around and organize it so that is the big positive of this there's some other things inside of here we're going to talk about because i think that's interesting um, one is going to be the slider um, i'm going to switch over to the camera so you can really see what's going on here this is like it essentially allows you to take what's on your program and then go to your preview and it allows you to just kind of fade it. So if you wanted to manually fade that, you could do that. Um, you could also use pre-existing transitions that you have. So if you had like a stinger transition or a fader or cut, you can specify what transition you're going to use before you go to the preview, um, before the preview is essentially on the program. So if we leave it at this right here i believe it's going to use my default transition but yeah if i click cut it's just going to cut to the other so if i go to monitor and webcam and i click cut it's going to do a hard cut over here and if we wanted to we could fade by 300 we can change this up we can essentially do whatever we want we can add other ones in here if we wanted our stinger um, we could do that and then it's going to use the stinger transition that i have as you can just see and this just gives you quite a bit of flexibility so that in a nutshell is essentially what this is. Um, but I wanna go ahead and show you some of the features that are essentially in here. And they kind of say what's going on, but there are some things I wanna specify. So a duplicated scene, and we're I'm gonna show you what that is. So we're gonna click on monitor and we're gonna transition. So a duplicated scene means that if I go to the monitor and webcam and I move this stuff around, 
it's created a duplicate scene while I'm working on it. So you can see that it's not showing up in the program monitor that I'm moving this stuff around and then I can transition to it and boom, it's there. It's updated, it's where I want it. Now, if we turn that off and we start moving this around, we can see that it's showing up on the program monitor. So for the most part, you'll probably want to keep duplicate scene on. And there is another thing to duplicate sources. So duplicate sources is useful if you want to tweak and adjust a source, for example. So let's go ahead and um, turn on duplicate sources, but there's something I want to show you. It does not affect like your webcam. So like if I went into um, a webcam and added like, let's say a filter and let's just add something crazy to it. So let's do color correction and I'll pull this down so you guys can see both of these. But if I turn the gamma up, it's gonna go up on both of them. Um, it does not work with the duplicate sources inside of that. Um, another thing that we can see is it should, I believe, work for images. So if I change this image from how to fix to the default how to tech logo, we can see that it does duplicate that. So. It'll allow us to do certain things with it, but not everything because a video, for example, if I'm updating the filtering and everything on it, it will cause problems. So I could still do other sources. So that's kind of what that button does. So you technically don't need duplicate sources on, but if you're doing some stuff like this and you only have one scene, it's the best way to do it. If not, um, transition over to a different scene and then work on the other scene in the preview. So for example, like if I needed to work on this, I'd probably transition over to my camera and I'd say, hey, let's go over here. I'm gonna work on some stuff. I'm gonna move this around, figure out where I want this and then transition back. And they didn't see you working on your stuff. So that is the benefit of OBS Studio, uh, or the studio mode, that is. So some things I wanna mention about this as well. One is the main thing that I think I need to mention is this is going to be more hardware intensive on your computer. So your CPU and maybe your GPU, they're gonna be using more resources and probably even more memory to do this. So if your stream is already struggling, studio mode, as far as being able to you know, render it or, you know, encode it and put it out to the live stream or to your recording, jumping into studio mode is not going to make that easier. You're probably going to lose more frames and you're probably going to run into some lagging or stuttering in your recording. So if you've got a good computer, this is a great tool to use. If your computer's already kind of struggling, I'd probably suggest not using studio mode. So yeah, guys, that's going to be all for this video. If you enjoyed, you know what to do. Go ahead and hit that like button. Get subscribed if you're not already, and also be sure to turn on notifications. And if you guys aren't already a member of our community Discord that's growing, be sure to check it out in the description down below. Our community Discord is great for interacting with other people that make content, live stream, and are just interested in technology. And we've got places to promote your own videos and live streams as well. Also, if you guys want to support the channel financially, go ahead and check out YouTube membership. They'll be linked down below as well. And also, big shout out and thank you to all of our current YouTube members. They should be on the screen right now. Round of applause. Thank you guys, I really appreciate it. You guys help out the channel more than you ever know. So yeah guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Chad from How To Tech, helping you take your tech to the next level and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.